Welcome to Tips and Tricks with Curve 4. This is Pat Harold of Chromix with some ideas for how you can make the most of Curve 4 software. Let's take a look at ink restriction. Among the many cool features in Curve 4, one you might have missed is the ink limiting feature. We really didn't set out to make this hidden or anything, but in order to see it, you need to click this little ink restriction checkbox in the setup area. This creates an ink restriction layer before your first run. Note that this is before the G7 process. We've gotten a surprising number of requests for an ink limiting feature in Curve because a lot of RIPs don't do a great job of this. At least when it comes to working with inkjets, this does a great job of helping you determine where to place your individual ink limits. This is also available at the Calibrate license level. You don't have to buy the complete license to use this feature. You'll want to give it a measurement representing your RIP and printer output. Curve 4 can automatically calculate this information from any of the measured targets you probably already have, a P2P51, a TC1617. There's a limit finder target included in your Curve 4 targets folder in the same place as your app. You can print and measure that also. If you drop in more than one file, duplicate patches will be averaged. This is showing you an overhead view of the gamut in two dimensions. And then also the sideways view, showing how dark the ramps get with the addition of more ink. It's finding some reversals going on in the secondary inks around the 90-95% area. So there's not much point in putting more ink there. You can also just drop in a profile if that's what you want. Why not drop in some of your more common profiles to find out how they stack up in terms of gamut shape and linearization? Very quick and easy. It creates a P2P51 target in the background and uses the patches from that to do its calculations. You can also export this extracted P2P as if it were a measurement. Hey, if you have a need to see what a quick P2P would look like from a profile you have, sort of simulate printing a P2P, this will do it. Remember that Curve 4 only works with CMYK data, not with RGB. So don't put an RGB profile in here. Here you can choose what reference you're aiming for. This just places the lily pads, your bullseyes in the proper places. It does not directly affect the ink limiting function. Take a look at the automatic recommendations for CMYK percentages. This is what the software is calculating to be good ink limits. Click Apply to move these to the right side and see how they will look in the spider graph. You can compare the new ink limits to the original 100% inks shown by the faint lines. Part of the beauty of this is being able to see how much your choice of ink limit will change things. Now, generally one of the more important prerequisites before actually calibrating to G7 is to arrange your inks so that you are getting close to a neutral 300% black. Here, you can now just push a button and we automatically calculate what CMYK settings you need in order to get the darkest neutral three color black. Notice you have an orange dot that tells you where the 300% CMY is. This alone can help those trying to calculate a good 300% CMY on a press. You can learn a lot about how inks interact with each other in your workflow by playing around with this a bit. Here are your primaries, cyan, magenta, yellow. This is a measurement from a dye sub process. It has these extreme hooks. How do you figure out where to limit the ink? Apply does a great job of deciding where to limit right about at the 90% mark where this reversal is happening with the secondaries. And it has gotten rid of this extreme hook. See how far out the CMY black is? We'll neutralize that. That makes a pretty ugly linearization graph a lot more controllable. When you change any of these ink limits, you see instantly how the other colors will react to the change. You can see how reducing the magenta will reduce the pull it has on the secondary colors. So red goes further toward the yellow and blue goes closer to the cyan. Reducing the yellow will move the red further toward the magenta and so on. This has a big effect. So 
You can see right here how the ink limiting will affect the shape and gamut of your printing. You can use the lock to lock the three colors together. We'll neutralize the CMY. And the sliders will maintain the neutral 300% as you move the inks up and down. Don Hutchison also talks about the ink restriction in another YouTube video that gives an overview of all the new features in Curve 4. And if you want to learn more about ink restriction, there's a whole section on this in the Curve 4 Guide Manual, starting on page 66. Thanks for watching.